Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to FemEd. So today while Theo is napping, I am going to try and sit down and film my newborn must-haves for the first month. Let me just start by saying like these are things that I have gotten or had before he was here that have helped me through this first month. He is five weeks old tomorrow. So this is kind of gonna be a video of must-haves and things that we got after Theo came. So I'm just gonna try to make this video quick. So the first category I wanna talk about is sleep because it's very important. I don't know, like I didn't conceptualize and I knew there'd be a lack of sleep, but there's a difference between like knowing that you're going have less sleep in your future and it being like 4 a.m. and you're exhausted. I know a particular order and I will link things that I mentioned down below in the description box if you're curious and I'll put stuff up on the screen because I'm not gonna go grab stuff because I don't have time for that and my house is like almost kind of clean. <laughs> the first thing is a swaddle with velcro or a zipper or something. There's so many different swaddles out there but there's also like stretchy swaddle blankets that are just you know a big square of fabric and those are cute and adorable and I think they work for like itty bitty new babies but my baby is like Hulk Hogan when it comes to swaddles and even once with velcro he will bust out of because he does not like having his arms in but one thing I have learned in the past like week and a half two weeks maybe is even if babies don't like having their arms swaddled in swaddled in it is crucial for them getting better sleep and for you getting better sleep so even if you think oh my baby loves its hands up by its face and it loves to sleep like this they can't control their arms and they will wake themselves up when they're itty bitty newborns and that's what theo does and so even though he hates it at first i swaddle his arms down and he sleeps so much better he is able to put himself back to sleep most of the time in between his sleep cycles because newborns don't their sleep cycles aren't connected so like every 45 minutes they will wake up we all like have disconnected sleep cycles but we learn as we grow up how to connect them so we'll like roll over in bed you know, push our pillow and go back to sleep and not remember it but babies will wake up and if they don't know how to like get themselves back to sleep they'll be awake and they will need whatever it is that puts them to sleep to put them back to sleep so anyways, a swaddle blanket is very important. I just recently, within the last couple days, got the Ollie swaddle, and it is a bit more pricier than other swaddles, but I literally hadn't bought any swaddles because my sister gave me swaddles, Velcro ones, but Theo is strong enough now that he would break out of those swaddle me ones because the Velcro things that the two little ears attached to weren't grippy enough, and so I couldn't get a tight enough swaddle on him. So I got the Ollie swaddle, and I so far love it. It's super easy to put on, and it, it's super easy to get tight enough. He can't like break out of it. I really do think it like soothes him back to sleep. Like it's easier when he does have that like startle reflux. It might kind of not necessarily wake him up, but you can see when it like squirm a little bit and then go back down. It is more pricey. Everyone recommends different swaddles. Okay, either I could try out two or three other swaddles and maybe find one, or I could just take that money and get this one. 50 bucks for a swaddle is a lot, but you cannot put a price on sleep. And Theo is to the point to where he is now sleeping, not through the night, but he wakes up like twice to eat. So I will take that. The second thing on my sleep list is a sound machine. This is like a two part thing. So what I've learned with newborn sleep and just baby sleep in general is they're so used to being in the womb. Like that makes sense, right? And they come out and there's all this space and it's very quiet. And so you kind of have to recreate the womb for the first couple of months. The sound of the blood rushing through your placenta is like a vacuum cleaner 24 seven. I can imagine that the world is a much quieter place. A sound machine is great for just white noise and so the one I got is the Marpac Hush or whatever it was 25 30 bucks or something but I love it because it soothes him and he is a noisy sleeper like he grunts a lot and when he is in between sleep cycles he grunts and kind of like shimmies and stuff and so like when you're sleeping right next to him that wakes you up but having a sound machine kind of dulls that sound so even though I wake me up, it wakes me up, it doesn't like get me as much. So I really like the sound machine that we got. So that's number two. Number three is something I got before he was born. And I call it like our egg light, little night lights. And these are like 20, 25 bucks, I want to say on Amazon. But I ended up getting a second one. So Michael has one on his nightstand and I have one on my nightstand because when you have a baby in there, you don't want to put on like your actual lamps or your overhead lights check on him and breastfeed at night. Michael wanted one so he could like, if he wanted to read or, you know, if you come in 
because he goes to bed at like seven. So if you want to come in and like find your clothes and stuff, it's nice because you just carry it around. Because having things portable is very helpful because that sound machine goes everywhere. The night light goes with us like when we travel and stuff. So you can make it super dim, you can make it brighter. Next on our list is, everyone says this, but like, pajamas, the zippers, like whoever invented snaps on, and not, okay, I don't wanna say baby clothes, but whoever invented snaps on baby pajamas, I don't understand. And now like when I see stuff and I see it snaps, I'm like, I'm not, not even gonna look at that because I got so many clothes from uh, my sister and both snaps and both zippers. And I like will only touch the snap jammies if all the other ones are in the wash who wants to do a snaps in the middle of the night so just yeah everyone tells you to get them sleepers with zippers you can get daytime clothes with snaps because you're with it and you have more patience but in the middle of the night zippers are easy peasy rice and cheesy next on the list is a bedtime routine so from the beginning i started trying to create a bedtime routine with theo just because i heard for them to differentiate between night and day and to know like, okay, these are the things that happen before we go to bed. And I can make a whole video on baby sleep and I might someday because it fascinates me. And usually it's just like dimming the lights with like itty bitty babies, you don't need to bathe them every day. So we bathe them probably like three-ish times a week at this point. He really likes baths. They turn him into like a zen little baby, but then he hates getting out of the bath because I think he gets cold. Then we always go into like our bedroom and we have the curtains pulled and the little like egg night lights on. And sometimes like either I'll have a sound machine on or I'll have like some very calm music on, usually his sound machine these days, because I think Music might be a little bit too stimulating for him. Like baby lotion and I give him a little massage. His jammies on, swaddle him up and he goes down. And it's like, it doesn't have to be a big complicated thing. And I'm sure like when he's older and stuff, like reading a bedtime story will become a part of that. But babies like routines and they like consistency. And so just like things to signal to their brain, like, okay, it is bedtime. But also being flexible to where like, if you want to go out with friends to dinner, realizing that like, okay, maybe you might not be home to do your bedtime routine to put him down at seven, but he can still go to sleep at seven and then you just transfer him to his crib when he gets home or his bassinet. Um, the other day we were driving home from somewhere and we were gonna get home to like 10 o'clock, but at like six something, I put him in his jammies. So when we got in the car and drove home, he would be in his jammies and it would hopefully be a more seamless transfer to the bassinet. A baby monitor. I got this at one month. When Theo was first born, like I was just tired. And so when he would go to bed, I would go to bed and like I was cool to go upstairs at seven or whatever it was, eight o'clock and just conk out. But now as I'm revitalized a little bit and he's sleeping a bit more at night and all that good stuff, I don't always want to go to bed at seven, but I feel like I can't hear him and I don't want him to get to the point where he has to get to the level of like a blood curdling scream for me to go see what's, if he needs something. I'd rather hang out with Michael and watch something on the TV with him down here. And so we decided to get a monitor and it is the greatest thing. And not only for like nighttime when Michael's here and I wanna hang out with him and not like go to bed with Theo, but during the day, like right now, I can put him down for a nap up in his bassinet, put on the monitor and then get stuff done around the house and not worry about like being in the basement doing laundry and not being able to hear him. Being able to film and then if I do hear a cry or something, I can look at the monitor and be like, okay, yeah, he put himself back to sleep rather than being like, oh, should I go check on him? So I always thought I would not be a baby monitor person, but I am a convert. <laughs> and the final thing in the sleep category that I can think of as at this point, and I think it was around the one month mark that I did this, but it was the taking care of babies newborn class the will I ever sleep again like online course and I debated and I debated and I debated for the longest time of like gosh I do this like I've read books I gotta figure it out I think I mentioned in a previous video like Theo did not like to be swaddled he liked his hands up but then he would wake himself up and so I didn't know what to do and so I was trying all these different things he hated his bassinet and I could never get him to sleep in there and so like I was trying to get him to sleep in it down here during the day and I was just like stressing myself out about it and I <laughs> two weekends ago we were in Kansas City Michael was at a soccer game with his friends and I was with Theo in the hotel room and he was having a conniption and I could like I knew he needed to go to bed but he wouldn't go to bed and I was stressed out because we were in a hotel in that moment I was like screw it 
I'm buying this class. I don't care if it's 70, 75 dollars or whatever it was, but it was the best money spent. Like I feel like I am a changed person. Theo's a changed person. Like he's not a perfect sleeper. I was up so much last night. Like he only needs to eat like twice during the night, around 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. But that doesn't always mean he goes back down very easily. And I think he had a lot of reflux last night, and so he was just uncomfortable. Michael and I tagged him that last night, but so he's not always a good sleeper. But I feel like I have so much more confidence in the things she taught in that course that I just highly recommend it. Like I can now swaddle my baby and he takes such better naps because of that course. I never understood the idea of how you were actually supposed to put your baby down drowsy. Theo would always nurse himself to sleep and then because he had a bit of acid you're supposed to hold him upright so i would and then he would just always be asleep and i'm like well he's asleep like what do i do i'm not gonna like wake him up recommend that class next on my categories is eating theo is currently breastfed which i'm very grateful for i'm gonna be doing one month update video on like my breastfeeding journey four things on the list the first thing is prefolds as burp cloths. I did cloth diapers for Theo and so we have different sized prefolds and he's too small to fit in these but these are perfect for burp cloths because he is a spitty baby. He vomits up milk all the time and these are super freaking absorbent and they're pretty big. I don't know they're not like cute so you're not worried about staining them with baby vomit and they're just perfect for like this wiping stuff off of yourself. Next on the list is my boppy pillow. I wasn't gonna get one and then I decided to ask my sister to borrow hers and I just got a different cover and I took it to the hospital with us which I think was great because when they're really small and you're trying to like figure it out it's good to have something to kind of like hold them so it's not just your arms. My only complaint with the boppy pillow is I don't feel like the sides of it are high enough to like rest your arms on so I always find that I like tuck pillow or tuck blanket underneath to like elevate it just a little bit more so I'm not like <sighs> holding him while he feeds a silicone breast pump so I have the spectra and I love it but because at this point in time I just breastfeed him and I don't necessarily have to be away from him for long periods of time like we're working on bottles actually because he does not like bottles he likes it from the tap silicone breast pump is awesome because a it's easy to just pump like an ounce or two to give him like a little bottle to practice if i'm gonna do like a full pump i'll use my like actual breast pump but then also when your milk comes in and you're super engorged um you're not supposed to pump during that but sometimes it's so painful that you need to like relieve just a little bit of the pressure and so I would pop that silicone breast pump on whichever boob was really achy and I did that twice and just to like relieve enough to where my boob just like didn't hurt so that was magical and the final thing in the eating category but it kind of goes into the pooping category is a tracking app for like diapers feedings and sleep the one i have is glow baby i want to say yep glow baby and i just got it when i was in the hospital i didn't like look into the different features of all the different apps because i was like two days after like having theo and i was just you know out of it i just tracked like diapers and feedings but then i've recently added in sleep to know like when he wakes up because they're awake when Windows are only so long. If he's getting like super fussy, I can like look at this app <laughs> and be like, oh, it was two hours, three hours that I f ago that I fed him, or he might have a dirty diaper because I changed it then, or oh, he's been up for an hour, so he needs to go back down. So it just helps like your mom brain figure out what to do with the baby. <laughs> Into the pooping category. Newborns only do so much, guys. Prefolds, like I said, there's so many things. Like obviously we use these as diapers. When it came down to it, to like actually be like, okay, it's Time to use my cloth diapers I got. Like I was terrified, not terrified, but I was like, oh my God, it's gonna be so much work. I'm gonna do it wrong. Like it's gonna be, yeah, just such a hassle, but so easy, so freaking easy. But they have so many other things. Like I said, burp cloths, but also like I said he was a spitty baby. So I will lay these down under his head when I lay him flat, like when he spits up and stuff. I lay it down under him on the change pad. I also use these as traveling change pads, pre-folds and covers as diapers. Like I said, I was super nervous about it, but I absolutely love pre-folds and covers. These are so absorbent, so, so, so absorbent. We use disposable diapers for the first like nine days of his life. And I remember it was day 10 that I was like, okay, 
here we are let's give the cloth diapers a go and i was like oh that's super easy i have not had a blowout in these i have not had leaking in these these are a dream and i absolutely love them travel i have two-ish three -ish things on this list i highly recommend not necessarily for travel but like day to day having some sort of like baby carrier for the newborns i love having a wrap i got the solly wrap and it is magical i love it people think it's super complicated my only thing is like if you're going to be going out and about like put it on in the car the tails would touch the ground not that it would matter because the ends don't touch your baby newborns like being snug and they like being next to you but if you want to get anything done <laughs> Sometimes they just need to be held and sometimes they just need to take their naps while you're wearing them Or if you want to go out to eat, it's super great If you want to go like for a walk and you can't use a stroller Just this weekend I forgot the wrap when we went to get food And I ended up having to take him home because he was so fussy and needed to go to sleep But he like couldn't go to sleep because he wasn't like snug enough Because he's used to like being swaddled or worn in a snug wrap and then a stroller. I didn't think I would use a stroller for months. Almost every single day, Thea and I go on a walk together and I love it. It keeps me sane because otherwise you're kind of cooped up in your house. It's great for them to get outside during the day to help them differentiate between night and day and it's good exercise for you. It's just like mental health mostly. And going along with the stroller is an infant car seat. I was not like against these, but I was like, I don't need an infant car seat and we got a convertible car seat which he will use when we were in the hospital Michael was like I want one of those carrier car seats and I was like no 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 we don't need one I've done all this research and I figured it out we don't need one but I think the day we got back from the hospital I ordered one online and it was the best thing ever because it's so nice to just be able if it's like hot rainy or snowy or anything to get them situated in the little car seat inside and then take them outside because like even the day we came home from the hospital we had the convertible car seat and like we have this tiny little like fragile newborn baby and we'd never used this car seat before and it was a billion degrees out and the truck was a billion degrees and so trying to like get them into that when it was like super hot and it was just a big fuff so that's my last thing is an infant car seat and so far those have been like, my must-haves that have really helped in this like month and there's other things i'm sure but those are the things that come to mind every baby is different every person is different but that is just what has worked out for us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below some of your like must haves for that first month. I'm sure things will change in the second month, third month and so on. And I'll kind of keep you updated with things that I get that make life easier. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.